Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Sly Cooper and the Stevious Raccoonus for the Sony PlayStation 2. In the last episode, we beat the main game. We beat Clockwork, we got the last page of the Stevious Raccoonus, and now all that is left is to beat the time in the Mattress Thief Sprint for every level in the game. At least every level that isn't a minigame. The first world that we're going to tackle is Tide of Terror. For this video, there will be six regular levels that I have to go through. And I will show off the winning run for each of them. And I'll explain how to do them in post-commentary. Master Thief Sprints, not the easy thing in the world to do, but they are doable, especially when you know what to do. So sit back and watch as I go through all six levels of Chapter 1, Tide of Terror. A Stealthy Approach this was the first Master Thief Sprint that I attempted and beaten when I played the game for the first time. And not surprisingly, it's the first one that I do for this Let's Play. Just test the hourglass, and the sprint will start. Just don't use the move you got after beating Clockwork, because the game takes the hourglass away from you if you do. You're going to be using the roll move to get some speed in the straightaways of all the Master Thief Sprints. As a matter of fact, it's the one move you're going to be using more than anything else with the Sprints, as the clock for the sprint speeds up and slows down with fast and slow respectively, giving you no real advantage at all if you use those moves. As a result, you have to use roll to move a little bit faster and even go down hills faster. Unless you use roll, you won't have a chance of being the sprint for a stealthy approach. Into the Machine. Into the Machine has you learning how to get past the narrow walkways you have to sidestep across in order to save time. You'll have to double jump, then press circle and hold the analog stick or d-pad towards the wall in order to move across a little faster, keep yourself on the narrow pathway, and save some time all the while. You'll also have to memorize this stage a little bit and figure out where those rings are so you don't get disoriented and cost yourself a few seconds trying to figure out where they are.
High Class Heist. This is probably the hardest of the Mather Thief Sprints in Tide of Terror. You barely have enough time to get through this one. You'll have to figure out how to get past the lasers quickly so that you can go from set to set without delay and without setting them off. You'll also need to know how to double jump over the laser fence once you are near the end of it. After that, you'll have to know when and where to cut corners after the jump across the lily pads so you can avoid the spotlights. You'll have to do the double jump across the narrow pathway around the column close to the end, and you'll have to be very careful not to touch the spotlights immediately after it. That last stretch with the spotlights is perhaps the hardest part of the whole sprint. And that part alone is why this sprint took me over 30 minutes to ultimately clear. Don't say I didn't warn ya! The fire down below. For this one, you'll need to be as quick with the spinning wheels as you are with your footwork and your platforming. This is especially true of the last wheel that you have to run on due to that pesky spotlight. Once you're able to get onto the conveyor belts, don't forget to roll. A cunning disguise. For this one, you clearly can't use the barrel beyond the very start. Otherwise, you're just going to make this harder on yourself and also even impossible. The hardest part is dealing with the squid guards. I was able to find a hiding place as well as an easy to miss one up I didn't know about before with the first one. As for the squid guard near the end, I just had to roll towards them and hope for the best. Also, getting a charm during the run or doing this run with a gold charm works best. You'll more than likely need the charm to get past the dart shooting globe to the end. As you can tell, I had to use that to my advantage. The Gunboat Graveyard. I redid this one so I could show off what it looked like after you beat a Master Thief Sprint run and you wanted to do one again. Anyway, the timer here may seem a little intimidating, but it really isn't as long as you know how to get to the exit and you know how to get there as quickly as possible. The spotlights at the beginning make things a little dicey, but if you know where they will be and how far they will go as they sweep back and forth, you shouldn't have much of a problem making it to the exit before the time runs out. Same thing with the spout lights on the airplane. And of course you gotta do that trick again. Don't forget to turn right at the submarine.
That is it for all of the Mather Steve sprint runs for Tide of Terror. Join me next time where we go through all the Mather Thief sprints for Mugshot's Turf. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!